Salvete omnes, this is I'm Emilia, also known as the Martian Geek. I've started a new semester, well actually I'm about three weeks in, and finally started a new LP project. This would also be my first time using Hegon for LP, so let's hope that works out okay. This is Mario and Luigi's Starlight Island Adventure. Obviously not a professional uh, professional game, but a ROM hack of Super Mario World. I'm actually kind of hoping that this video might inspire some other people to get into playing some ROM hacks, and maybe even making some. Though admittedly, before this, you very well might have had the impression that 90% of all ROM hacks, especially Super Mario World ones, were just general disaster areas full of graphical glitches and horrible level design, and just generally frustratingly, ridiculously difficult. Now, I've been involved with Super Mario World hacking for several years now, and I'd kind of like to refute such a claim. I mean, really? 90% of all Super Mario World hacks were like that? That's kind of ridiculous. It has to be at least 95. But that said, this is one of the distinctly non-horrible ones. It actually did kind of go through a bit of a strenuous process during development. I imagine just about every hack does, except maybe ones that are amazingly short. There is even a point where it may have been possible that it wouldn't or couldn't get finished. But it did. Now, Gamma V, aren't you glad you didn't cancel this now? I mean, you pulled through and you ended up with something wonderful. If you have any doubts, well, just remember that after all, I'm LPing this, aren't I? This is only the second ROM hack I've ever done, and really only the first full-length one. I don't even know if you can count Super Mario World Hacks 101. Considering I finished it in a day, it was only four videos long, and it was more of a tutorial than a hack. So, yeah, you're better than you think you are. And hey, at least you finished some hacks, I mean... I've started, like, five and come up with ideas for probably three times that many, yet I haven't finished a one. So there. And in case you're still worried about that whole ROM hacking being a sin thing, well... You know what I think? I think that if God really, truly didn't want you to be hacking Super Mario World, he wouldn't have given you the creativity to make a hack in the first place. So with that, well... I'm about done with this intro, so let's start playing. Yeah, that's the file I had when I was just playing the game normally. Oh yeah, quick note before we start this. I am aware that there are some still are still some bugs in this hack. But as far as I know, none of the bugs occur early on in the game the game. So since I really don't want to postpone this anymore, my plan is just to go as far as I can without anything bugging up. And you know, whenever they end up getting fixed, I'll just update to the new version. Now, instead of a one- or two-player game, you can have a Mario or Luigi game. I'm not actually sure what the difference is. I think Luigi might have might jump higher and maybe have higher bouncing fireballs. Is it like a Super Mario Advance 2 kind of deal? I don't think I ever remember actually playing as Luigi. But, for, I guess, sake of standardization, let's just go with Mario. Mario and Luigi just can't seem to catch a break! During a vacation on Starlight Island, Princess Peach has gone missing again. Yeah, what else is new? She needs to get G GPS so they could, like, just warp right to the World 8 castle or something. Anyway, we are in Peaceful Plains 1. New Super Mario Brothers main theme. That's the music, I mean. And these graphics are actually custom drawn by Gaffic or Gamma V herself, and I rather like them. I like this grassland better than her old one. The background's not too shabby either. Rather simple, but it works. Actually, a lot of things in this hack are like that. Simple, but quite effective. Sometimes people seem to try to do too much in hacks, and it ends up just turning out in, as a mess. Second Yoshi coin there. I know they're actually called Dragon Coins, but I've always called them Yoshi Coins, and... I don't know, why call them the Draggy Dragon Coins in the first place? Yoshi isn't a dragon. Oh hey, I landed on a piece switch as I came out of the pipe. And the coins are even blue, like they were in Super Mario Bros. 3. Now how far ahead did that exit pipe put me? I actually kind of don't like it when bonuses put you farther ahead in the level with the return pipe. 
because it means that you miss part of the level. That's especially annoying if there happened to be a Yoshi coin or something in there. I mean, it's not, like, a major grievance of mine, but I just prefer to go back and check out what I missed out on. And, well, if the bonus puts me earlier in the level instead, I don't have to go back like that, so... The new Super Mario Bros. series is not known for its soundtrack, but I like the music okay. Ah, we must be close to the end now. That was five Yoshi coins. Oh, yeah. Instead of the standard goals, we have these goal blocks. Victory theme from the original Super Mario Bros. Of course, in the original game, it used, like, one of the only two samples in, that, in Super Mario All-Stars that aren't in Super Mario World. Onto Peaceful Plains 2, which I'm guessing is underground. The music in here is actually a composition of my own. I wrote it quite a while ago for, like, some sort of chocolate level design contest. Since you only make one level, I tend to make my levels really long when faced with such contests. And there is one part that was underground, so I wrote this for it. Of course, now I think I could do a lot better. Probably make it more fuller sounding, and maybe use some better percussion. Yeah, sooner or later I'll get around to updating that. Probably the entire soundtrack, actually. But in the meantime, well, whatever. We have Monty Moles. Well, moles tend to live underground. And we have Green Koopas. You know, Gamma V and I are kind of in agreement that somebody needs to make a bipedal version of the Koopas from Super Mario Bros. 3. Okay, can you get into that pipe? I can't remember. Because we both prefer the bipedal Koopas to the quadrupedal Koopas and... Super Mario Bros. 3 ones? I don't know. Have kind of a nice... well... If you're making like a Super Mario Bros. 3 styled hack, I guess pretty much limited to the ones from the original game, even if not all the other graphics and stuff are technically from the original game. Yeah, I didn't forget about that pipe. Yoshi coin number three. You know, how many people out there actually go for all five Yoshi coins in Super Mario World hacks? I normally don't, because all I get you is a one-up. A lot of them tend to be placed in rather precarious locations that tend to make you lose lives. And the best you can get is possibly one-fifth of a life. And you have to finish the level without dying like I just did. Brilliant! Well, I guess now we get to find out that um, the checkpoint system in this game... Well, fortunately she did use multi-midway points. After my prompting, anyway. But the checkpoints are invisible, kind of like in the original Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, there's not much point in going up that pipe now, since all my Yoshi coins went away when I died. That's the problem with Yoshi coins. I mean, I know there are patches and stuff that change that, but hardly anyone ever uses them, so you just end up with the standard Yoshi coin system, where all you get is an extra life, and if you die, well, you're just out of luck. Which is why I usually don't go for Yoshi coins in these games. I mean, I get them anyway, but if they're in some place where I'm likely to die getting it, or if I die and if I die, I'm not going to go back to get ones I missed. What I'd rather do is have them be more like the Star Coins in New Super Mario Brothers games, where they don't get erased when you die. At least only the like if you collect two and then hit the checkpoint and then get the third one, then die, you still have two. You don't go back to zero. But you do still have to get the third one, because you died after getting it. But you... and after the checkpoint. And Yoshi coins should be useful for more things, like unlocking secret levels or something. On to Peaceful Plains 3. Athletic theme from Yoshi's Island, which is by far one of my favorite athletic themes in Mario games. I've noticed that a lot of other times they just tend to remix the main theme, which is kind of lame. I mean, Super Mario Bros. 3, I think, was the only other game that didn't do it. It actually had a separate athletic theme. The first Super Mario Bros. didn't even have one, nor did Super Mario Bros. 2. But yeah.
yeah. Could probably make a better port of this, but it suffices. And yeah, we're on mushroom platforms. Typical Mario fare. And we have these swinging platforms. Sprite 5F, and they are coded so weirdly that I couldn't even comment them when I disassembled them. Also, yeah, I didn't mention, but the Goombas are Super Mario Bros. 3 styled. Not just in graphics, but also in behavior. They instantly get squished when you step on them instead of becoming carryable, like uh, the ones from the original Super Mario World would be. I actually prefer that system, honestly. Because otherwise, you don't really have, like, a basic enemy that just dies in one hit. You have shellless Koopas, but you don't really see those very often, it seems like. Not to mention Super Mario World's Goombas kind of look weird anyway. More platforms this time, two in a row. I kind of like athletic gen levels in general, actually. Oddly, I'm not as... I usually don't find them as fun to make as they are to play, but certainly not one of my least favorite level types to make. Yeah, I'd say my two favorite world themes in Mario games are probably Mountain and Sky, both for making and playing. Get these coins and jump down! hit the halfway point yet. I must have. I did mention the checkpoints are invisible in this game. Like I said, I'm at least glad that she did use the multi-midway point patch. Though original, it wasn't originally in the game, but... Oh, hey, end of level. So, one, 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 two, one, three. If I remember correctly, this game tends to have four levels per world that aren't a castle. So, fairly short, I'd say. I have a tendency when making hacks to try to use all 96 levels. Other people don't. Peaceful Plains 4, 1 4. And we're back to the new Super Mario Brothers theme and the grassland. You know, I could have sworn she used uh, Bean Bean Plains for the grassland theme, but maybe that was. Maybe I'm thinking of a different level. Or possibly even a different hack. Yeah, I hate it when people make levels that are significantly longer than the ones in the original game and then don't use multi-meter white points. Come on, people, we've had the ability since 2011 to put more than one checkpoint in your Super Mario World levels. Why don't you? The original game got away with it because most of its levels were fairly short. But, you know, if you're making a level that's 60 screens long and you only have one checkpoint, it's just kind of tedious. Unless you're using save states, then it's no problem, but, well, I don't use save states when I'm LPing, and I prefer not to use them when I'm playing. Unless I, like, really need them. I actually see, I like to see this hack get released on a cartridge. I found this website that actually puts stuff like hacks, translations, and games not released in... Oh, hey, we can go down that pipe in North America on real Super Nintendo cartridges, which is pretty cool. Okay, so you can spin jump those blocks as well as smash them. I think the author was going for a Super Mario Land 2 kind of vibe with that, because in that game you could spin jump them. But yeah, I saw at least one Super Mario World hack that actually made it onto a real cartridge. I'm not sure how much it costs to do such a thing. And I'm not sure what you do about licensing. Copyright kind of stuff. I mean, I've never heard of anyone else getting sued for it. But... Whatever. More Koopas, more flowers. Another thing I like about Gamma's V's, Gamma V's graphics is... Uh, she tends to not just have basic land, but also some decorations as well, like these flowers and grass. I mean, I've seen plenty of sets that looked nice, but pretty much just had the basic nine land squares plus some inner corners, and that was about it. Maybe some slopes thrown in there. We are on to the first castle, number one, Iggy's castle. 
I can't remember what order the bosses go in in this game, but... And you used my New Super Mario Bros. Wii Castle theme for... Sweet. Also, I like these graphics. Okay, technically it's like the New Super Mario Bros. Wii, New Super Mario Bros. 2, and New Super Mario Bros. U Castle theme. Because the general consensus is that the composers for the New Super Mario Bros. series are really lazy. But when I ported it, it was just the New Super Mario Bros. Wii Castle theme, so... We have Super Mario Bros. 3 Thwomps now with facial expressions. Those jumps are actually kind of difficult for only World 1. Obviously, I didn't die doing them, but... Super Mario Bros. 3, I think, styled Potaboos? I've noticed a lot of the graphics in this game are kind of Super Mario Bros. 3-like. And now we have Layer 2 Scroll going on. I.e. Some of the foreground goes up and down. And can very well squish you into the ceiling, or drop you into the lava. Can you kill Thwomps with shells? Oh, I guess you can. I think the key to scrolling rooms like this is to figure out how far up and down the platforms go. Okay... One, two, three... Looks like about five tiles or so. See, I think you can... From what, if I remember correctly, you can set it to scroll either... Oh, that was close. Either 5, 6, 8, or 12 tiles. So... Looks like here we get 5. More lava. Who designed this castle? Boss falls into lava. Okay, now that is the boss door. Super Mario Bros. 3 boss theme. Hello, Icky, you jump weird. Whoa. Okay, I guess he takes four heads. Unless he was just invincible for one of those. But yeah, now World 1 is clear, and do we get a cutscene? I forgot. I don't think we do. Considering it's been almost 18 minutes, I think I'm going to split the rest of the game up into two videos per world. But yeah, we are finished with the first world of Starlight Island Adventure. So, I hope this will be fun. Like I said, it's basically the first time I've ever done a real, a real full-length Super Mario World hack in an LP. So, with that, I will see you next time in, it looks like, Parched Plateau.